Hey, hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to take a look at the HP T620 TIN client. Yes, another thin client. A year or two ago I used to make a couple of videos about another HP thin client. It was the T5730W, I think, which featured a dual-core AMD CPU and uh, two gigabytes of RAM. And we uh, had some fun with that. I figured this time it would be good to uh, take a look at a bit newer thin client, also because the other one got fried. And uh, this is the unit in question. As you can see on the front, we have two USB 2.0s, two 3.0s, we have a line in and a line out. And on the back we have two more USB ports, a gigabit Ethernet port, and uh, two display ports. We even have serial on this particular unit, so that's pretty nice. But uh, this one does support the dual displays over display port. And it'll happily run, uh, I think, two 1440p displays, no problem, so that's pretty swell. In terms of internal specifications, I think it is best to uh, take a look over here on the display. There we go. Let's take a slightly better look at things. So let's open up the CPU Z and the GPU Z here. GPU Z to load up here. Apparently, determining the graphics card is particularly difficult today. So, let's start with the CPU here on the side. We have an AMD GX415GA, which is a, actually not a CPU as such, it is, is a system on a chip. It's actually an SoC, it has a 15 watt TDP, and has integrated Radeon graphics. It has the 8330E, standing for embedded, probably. It has a base clock about 800 megahertz, and it's in cool and quiet mode, but it goes all the way up to uh, its maximum frequency, which is 1.5 gigahertz. It has four cores, four threads, two megabytes of two cache, again 15 watt TDP. It is based on the Kabini core, but the embedded variety of that. You may know that the Kabini core was also used for the AMD AM1 platform a couple of years ago. So this is basically that. In fact, this is mostly identical to the uh, Sempron 3850, which is actually slightly slower clocked. It's a 1.3 GHz quad-core CPU. So this one uh, has a leg up on that one. The main downside to the graphical prowess of this system is the memory bus. It is only a single-channel memory controller, so we're only running at a 64-bit wide bus, despite having two 4 GB modules in here for a total of 8 gigabytes, running at 1600 MHz DDR3. One stick was included with it. It's a single 4 gigabyte stick. It's apparently a Samsung module. I added the cheapest DDR3 L1600 uh, sodium that I could find, which happened to be a HyperX Impact from Kingston. And it appears to be running just fine. So we're currently running DDR3 1600 at CL11, which both uh, of these modules support in their JDAC profiles, so that's good. And uh, there's not really all that much else to see in terms of these specifications. One uh, fun little thing, and it is quite a little here, this is the original uh, SSD that's, uh, that comes in these books. This machine actually came with an M.2 SSD already. This is a SATA variety. Uh, it is a SATA, or actually M.2 54 I think. I forget what that exact standard is called, but it's one down from the regular 80 millimeter uh, modules that you find on most PCs these days. I replaced this 8 gigabyte unit with a 128 gigabyte unit that I found online. Both the memory and the SSD were the cheapest ones that I could find that fit the bill on Amazon. So, yeah, ordered them from there. They came the next day and uh, I put them in here. So yeah, again, this is mostly just an introduction video to the machine, so we're not going to do any in-depth things. The only thing that I want to establish here is a baseline of the performance of the machine, so you can get a general idea what kind of power we're working with here. And uh, after that, we'll just go ahead and do some experimentation with this. I'm going to see how well it does as a media server. That's not one thing that I want to try. I'm going to do a, obviously, we need to try and see if you can install uh, EZX on here or whatever. I have a special modified ISO that will probably work on the network card in this. 
It's just always something that I want to try, and probably some other things as well. If you have any other suggestions of things we can try with this thing client, leave them down below in the comment section and we'll take a look at it. And then we'll see if we can make it happen. The answer is probably yes. You can also send me an email if you uh, want some more in-depth information or whatever. So in terms of the performance baseline, this is the Geekbench 5 score. Running Windows 10 Pro, by the way, version 2004. So the very latest, all updates installed. We can see here that this is an HP uh, T620 quad-core thing client. We have 188 points single-core score. Yikes. And 657 multi-core. They're both not really that great, but again, this is AMD hardware from 2013, basically. This thing client itself appears to be of made in somewhere in 2015. These were very, very common, and they're still pretty cheap to get nowadays, so... You can find these for under 100 bucks in many places. I've also ran Cinebench 11.5. I've chosen this version because it is a bit older, and because I can make a better comparison here. You might not be able to tell all that well, so I'll move over here so we can zoom in a little bit on the scoring. Sorry about all that movement. It makes you sick. I'm definitely very sorry. But we can see here, we have the SOC. It scores 1.45. The score on top of it is a 2.4, or actually a 2.67 uh, gigahertz. I think this is a Core 2 Quad Q6700, if I had to guess. Up there, the Optron X3421, that is the same APU. It is the very APU that was in my HP ProLite Microserver Generation 10. So this score is about half that, just under half. That thing turbos all the way up to like 3.4 gigahertz on a single core, so that's not too shabby. Up here is also an i3240, which is now an 8-year-old chip. That's also about twice as fast. And really start getting into the faster CPUs. Like, uh, let's see here. If we scroll up a little bit, we find... Let's see here. That, that's this result over here. The 8-core Xeon 5462. This is the score that the Mac Pro 3.1 gets, the 2008 Mac Pro. It scores 6.61 in this test. And this inclined scores 1.45. So it's almost, uh, or well, basically five times uh, more powerful than Mac Pro. So yeah, I guess you can really tell that this thing is made for energy efficiency more than anything. And uh, that would be completely correct. So what other test is there left but to actually see yeah, the end all question, but can it run Crisis though? Well, let's find out. Alright, Crisis is loaded. So, let's load into the most recent safe game here and get our bearings. It is currently set to 800 by 600 resolution at the lowest details possible. I've killed a couple of KPA so we can look around a little bit without being disturbed too much. This game has always been a chore to load. Also because MS MSI Afterburner wouldn't work properly, I've used fraps. So we can get our bearings here. Press the any key. My keyboard does not have one, but we'll press one key that I know works as well. It's not too shabby for a, a system like this, I don't think. So let's first try and see if we can get a better resolution here. Let's go full native resolution on this without changing any of the details. Let's make it crash or chug or both. There we go, we have our frame rate, but the image is definitely a lot clearer now. So that's fun. So I guess we, sh we should go for a medium ground here. Let's say 1280-720. And if the frame rate is still above 30, we might be able to uh, push 
ever so slightly higher in terms of details. Well, we're still at about 40. That's good. Okay, let's go high detail, 720p. As far as I know, that should also enable DirectX 10 effects, which this should support. Ooh, it's not looking too good. <laughs> Okay, there it is. Well, it is definitely pretty. Now look at those effects. That's that's actually pretty snazzy. Fifteen FPS at high detail, seven twenty p. Right. Recently, did a video on the Mac Pro gaming, and we use sixteen eighty ten fifty at very high details. So, let's see if we can match that and see what the difference is. I'm going to assume that we're going to have to look at about 2 FPS maybe. <laughs> it's currently at zero. Oof. Alright, okay, now we're at the same settings as the Mac Pro, maxed out 1680, 1050, look at that, 4 FPS, but it's pretty though. But the answer is, can you run Crisis? Yes, it can run Crisis. I guess that's not something that anyone was expecting. It was actually not too shabby either. I mean, you can basically play it just fine at about 720p medium settings. That would be somewhat comfortable. It's interesting how this game scales to AMD hardware these days. Because I surely know that Back in the day, when you had an AMD graphics card, it would run like 10-20% slower than a, a comparable NVIDIA card at the time, so... This is overall pretty good. And I guess this is the time where we should end the video. This was the introduction to the new HP T620 Thin Client that we're gonna have some fun with in the next couple of videos. And, uh, again, if you have any video suggestions, feel free to put them in the comment section down below, or send me an email, and I'll take a look at it if I can. Hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.